Hello, this is Maria from Homeschooling UK. I thought I'd, um, I did do this video once before, but I don't think I actually put it on the YouTube. It's about exploring British literature, and it's a printout I found on the internet, and it's like a book, if I show you. It's all, that's, all that is just the book, and it's basically, it's about history and literature, and all the big ideas that they sort of have. And it's in a little folder, and... Just so it's very interesting. If you want to teach your children English and literature and history, it's very good, and I recommend doing this. I did put a link on my um, my other YouTube video under the Homeschooling UK section, but I'm not sure where it is. But you'd have to hunt for it. It should be labelled English literature. Um, I think it's. Is it? God's sake, I do just hate folders. Exploring, it should be under um, English Literature PDF book, maybe, I don't know what I actually writ for that. But, but I'll give you a flip through so that if you're interested, you know, you can just look for it on my YouTube videos. Or even put it in on Google, and it should come up with quite a lot of stuff. But yeah, there's um, gives you close reads and historical lenses and things. It's just very good and it's good to help sort of teach your teen or your child English through time basically. History and Charles Dickens is in it. How they both connected history English with literature. Gives you critical thinking and writing. Focus on thinking skills and things. Also, bits about the writing process. preview of the unit goals which is what you obviously decide what you're looking at first then it goes on to the Anglo-Saxon and medieval periods and obviously it gives you a brief information about bits and bobs on the front before you continue in this sort of story of it all origins of the nation and then Anglo-Saxon and it gives you a few things to historical context, say centuries of invasion, um, additional background information if you wanted to look on the site. But there's like over three, 250 pages here, really nearly 300 I think. The Norman Conquest, how it's connected to English and literature and the history of it. So it says they're both connected, so you can use this for history and English basically. Cultural influences, Christianity in the world and Rome and stuff like that. And then Beowulf is a quite is in here as well. The story and the some questions about it, which is really good. The change in language from Old English, how it grew and everything. Reflections on life. Medieval period, which is really interesting because of all the pictures and the work that they have. It's, it's like art as well, so you can combine all the lessons to do art, history and English. But you sort of make them more aware of their writing as well. See, there's lots of romance in this, but the artwork is very good. I recommend just giving it just some of the artwork, really. I have done some in colour, but I, most of it I did in black and white, just to save me money, really, from printing the whole thing up. <coughs> we actually haven't used this yet, but we will be coming to 
obviously some point in the time where we'll be looking it through and having a look through it together, reading and writing and where that comes with it. So it's even says so then there's artists like Tori Amos in here who's a musician, she's a singer. Um it's just it's all related to all sorts of things that combines everything together. It's very interesting how it's actually worked like that. Um gives you a little um from Beowulf, a powerful monster living down in the darkness. So you know you can read that or you can get the whole lot from the section of the later on in the book. It's a bit more about Beowulf. As you explore the key ideas and things and reading um, reading old English poetry and vocabulary and context and then of course we come to Beowulf. And usually the poem, obviously it's all in pictures. More poem. It's quite a long poem. Good, nice, nice pictures. Sorry about the glare. I have I've got my washing machine on at the moment and I can't hear the my speaking and you don't want that in the background. So. I'm actually in the conservatory, as you see I've got the door shut slightly and my, my study area is a bit of a mess so I'm going to be doing a video about how to clean all that up later <laughs> which would be fun <laughs> well, it was before and then after <laughs> but yeah, so this is still Beowulf and it's very long and it's um, very interesting because you can get them to take notes about stuff and write bits about it and, and get their ring they're learning their writing skills up as well. More pictures, a bit more about poetry on here. So yeah, the poem poem takes up quite a lot of pages actually. I didn't realise it was so long. There we go. Come I think we go to the little the, the analysts. And Grendel's mother. And it's even more poem. So it's really good. It's, if I can turn the pages over. So turn it back. The Battle of Grendel's Mother. Some more pages. more analysing of what you've just read and then some more The Last Battle of Beowulf and The Death of Beowulf so Beowulf, however you say it well, I've seen the film as well and I've not read this bit yet so maybe you should read it first before you watch the film <laughs> comprehension there after the reading of it all you get all this to look through and traits and deeds and things which is something you can get the kids to do obviously so you read it together and you do this together really it's a, something that you need to do together I think Re reading and writing connections Calibration across 1,200 years, and it's this is really long. Homer, and it now it goes on to the Homer, and about 700 BC. Like more artwork, which I printed black and white. I did print some colour, but not very much. Achilles and things like that. Lots of 
lots of lots of things in here. It says reread lines 246 to 256. Why do you think Achilles mistreats Hector's body in this manner? I know I'm not very good at pronouncing some of these words. I don't use them every day. <laughs> That's no excuse, I know. But yeah, these are, like I say, very long poems to take up most of the first section of the book. So we can skip that bit. Well, then we go to the epic translation, and this is obviously from Lord of the Rings, as you have a picture there of Aragon. And this is writing to compare. So then you sort of carry on. And this history of the English church and the people. So that's, you know, an inspire you sort of thing. And then obviously the history of the English church and the people. And artwork again. More writing. And then we've got the, that's another story from the Exeter book. C950. More literature, reading. And I'll see more literacy. There's be the wanderer. And some more artwork. He goes on to this piece, another picture. Oh, actually, sorry, this is the wife's lament. And then that goes on to the a few pages like there. More analysing and lit literacy criticisms. And it goes on to the Marjorie Kemp, the book of Marjorie Kemp from that, and the strengths that you can work on or find, strengths and key ideas, the book of Marjorie Kemp, there's there, another piece of artwork, legacy of masterpieces and then another story and I like the little details they have in the corners which are really nice Parson family and then I see coloured coloured picture there which is really really nice to look at so you can involve art and history, obviously, is English as well. Um, it gives you dates and things to look for. I don't know if you can see that very well. But it's a long, very long book. And I think it's well worth you using this in your child's English and history lesson. And maybe adding it to art. They have comprehension and it tells you what you need to do, literary criticisms and common life. Occupation well Marjorie Kemp and things. Medieval readers me medieval narratives. Which is this part. Canterbury Tales. So it gives you all the very um, well known stories and poems and some nice artwork which you can involve in your child's homeschooling and I haven't used it yet but I'm going to use it soon because it's um, we're just covering all the verbs and nouns and all that sort of thing first before we carry on with something like this because this will take a while to do so we need to start it when I have nothing else to do but yeah, it's just, it's 
it's very nice. I think it's just lovely. And to, to sort of get it free as well is even more fantastic. And I've hopefully included it on my site for you people so you can use it too. But I'm not sure whereabouts it is. I should have made this as a unique video on its own and put a link just below it, but I didn't think of that at the time. But this is definitely um, definitely worth having in your collection of homeschooling information for the learning. And if you're interested in just that yourself, then it's just good to have, I think. I'm not sure how far we've got to go, but... Then you obviously have lots of vocabulary and context. You have the wife of Bath's tale from the Canterbury Tales, so some of it extends out to all that sort of thing. Good artwork again. Another lot of poem and another poem. Lots of poems there. So yeah, lots of more poem from there. And more, so it's a very long, just like the Beowulf, the Canterbury Tales is very long as well. I think there's only like three or four stories, five, maybe something like that in here. Journeys of the Spirit, Distant Mirror, In the Footsteps of the Faithful. So I don't know, there must be about eight to ten stories that's been pulled into um, perspective so that you can use it as a lesson plan, reading skills and all sorts of things for a vocabulary and sort of context. More beautiful art. As you said, I did create some nice pictures to um, come in colour. is after reading what you've just looked at. I'm sorry about the glare, but it's just supposed to be rough. And obviously Barbara Allen in the Robin Hood and the Three Squires. Just up and bar the door. Ah, there we go again. Reading ballads. We read lines 25 to 32. So if you read lines and so forth, and it says it again there 21 to 24. So 21 must be. 21 kind of must be there. 24 must be there. So yeah, and then you go on to this page 25 to 40. So the lines are numbered in this, so. You can get them to rewrite it and put it on the whiteboard to time to do this like this. It says, um, identify patterns of repetition and rhyme in lines 33 to 48. So you can write that on the board and get them to read that bit and reprint it up or something. So it's quite good. There's another one. Describe the subject matter of this ballad, which aspects of the ballad would most likely appeal to an audience of common people. Explain your opinion. More comprehension and literacy. Then we have medieval life and times. And I like the nice little calligraphy set up there. Is honour worth dying for? Green Knight, there. Beautiful artwork, isn't it? But I didn't, I couldn't do it all in colour. It was all just crossing an arm and a leg, really. I just, I thought, just do some in colour, and then do the rest in black and white. I seem to use so much black and white anyway. 
I did. This is a very famous picture. I've seen it in art through the times anyway. And if you have the art history folder like this as well that I've put on YouTube, you will see this is mostly in there as well. It's an oil by William Morris. And it's beautiful as well. Lovely. But this is a English and history um which you can use for English or history or both, you just cross them together sort of thing. I would recommend you obviously doing it with them as it would be more fun for both of you to do it together. And another piece of that work. Page is numbered so you can just print out one page per time if you need to, one section at a time. 251 and another beautiful picture. Reread lines 221 to 239 briefly. Summarise Gawain's letter to Sir Lancelot. More artwork. This is basically there. Illustration from the romance of King Arthur. And a conflict a bit there. It says, What internal conflict does Sir uh, Bedivere experience in lines 343 three to 359? How does this, how does he ultimately resolve it? Sorry, I'm reading through the top of the bloody screen, so it's a bit hard to see everything. <laughs> and yeah, and there's this as well. Reading. For information and more comprehension and maybe vocabulary and context, legacy of medieval romance, legends in film, King Arthur, media literacy legends over time. Obviously, it's got the actors that played the person that they were filming, you know. and King Arthur in film. We have these, a close up of everything on here. Sorry, I should have done that with the other ones, but. So, if you did want to include the films from these, the King Arthur films, so that you actually could watch it and then you just write the questions that they need to do on the board, it would be just as good, I suppose. I didn't think of that. I think I would rather just work from the paper, you know where you are. And you can underline it in specific places if you need to. Applying the writing process, drafting, revising and editing. Then we have comparisons, contrast essays, delivering an oral report, shows you what to do there. More reading comprehension from Beowulf. More comprehension sort of tells you what you can do here and there. Canterbury Tales. More comprehension writing and written the responses. Vocabulary, writing and grammar. So yeah. <coughs> Ideas for independent reading. And it shows you Obviously, the Beowulf, Grendel, and the death of King Arthur, life in medieval village, and the history of the kings of Britain. You just look them up on the internet, don't you? And that bit about they and does fate control our lives and things, and that's it. So, but yeah, I would recommend having this. 
Now I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure if I actually writ this, put this on my YouTube, but if you do want it and you cannot find it on my YouTube videos, um, I would just recommend finding it in Google. Just find anything in Google, can't you? It's So yeah, this is definitely a keepsake. I think you can use that for the whole time you're homeschool your children, and even for more. And this video is a bit long, but I'm trying to get to the front so I can show you. If you do want to get this video, this um, book on PDF, then I would just write Exploring British Literature on PDF and see what it comes up with. It should be basically um, basically should come up with all of this or even put in Literacy Essentials Workshop I'm not sure how I found it obviously it's from um, maybe from California, I'm not sure but yeah, I would definitely put in Exploring British Literature first and see if it comes up. And it's obviously about 300 pages. Let me have a check. I haven't got some of the numbers on. 281. So it's 281 pages of English literature. So it doesn't cover loads and loads of English literature, but it does mean the main ones that I think you do GCSE in. Thank you. Thank you, like and subscribe. Bye.